All right, this is going to demonstrate some uses of the foreground layer that uh, some might be obvious and some might be uh, counterintuitive. But uh, we're going to explore the story of poor Keith. Keith has been uh, shipwrecked on this island, horrific shipwreck, shipwreck. He is washed ashore and he wants to explore to see if he can find a way off of this island. He looks around and notices well, there's some ruins at the top of that hill, but before I explore that, there's this old causeway here. It looks like maybe it used to one stretch off the island, maybe to an offshore uh, bastion or something, but you can walk underneath it. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to walk underneath that bastion or that causeway and say, well, sure enough, look, there's a little hidden cave back here under the foundations. I wonder if that is valuable shelter and as he walks closer to the mouth of the cave the shadow dissipates and he says well yes indeed look somebody hit a treasure chest here that's awesome i'm going to make a note of that i'll come back for it because i don't want to lug it all over this island he walks back out he starts walking up uh, towards the house he wonders hey is anything uh, on top of that causeway he asks the GM. Uh, the GM would have set this up beforehand with automation once this becomes an API-friendly feature. Uh, he's going to change that layer on the causeway uh, to the map layer. Now something's going to happen here. That black shadow is going to go with it. So we're going to do the same thing there. Uh, n I did not group them because that would cause them to act the same. But again, if I was automating this, I would have those disappear at the same time. So I'll also move that to the map. Now, same thing, the treasure chest is gonna be here. This would all be automated. But uh, going back to Keith, he can now walk on top of the causeway. He says, well, there's nothing really here. It's a nice view of the ocean maybe, but uh, all right, time to investigate that, uh, that house. So he says, I'm not going to uh, walk in here. I'm gonna walk straight to the front door. So he walks through this little gap comes to the front door, and once he passes inside, oh, look, the uh, interior has become visible. He does a little exploring, says, wow, this place was not abandoned too long ago. Oh, look, there's a bed. I'm exhausted. Takes a little nap, gets up refreshed, and decides to investigate the rest of the house. He uh, uh, walks through this doorway and says, oh, my goodness, a wizard lives here. Uh, I better be careful because... This guy left his summoning circle going. But I'm terribly curious. I'm going to investigate. Holy cow! There's a tentacled horror eldritch monstrosity from beyond. Keith is terrified, runs out of the house, uh, is panting on the front porch, and says, Oh, wow, that was terrifying. But look, there's a cove over there. I wonder what's at the bottom. Because from here, I can't see the shoreline. So he walks closer, and once he gets within a certain distance, spies, yes, indeed, there is a boat there, and there are two inhabitants. Unbeknownst to him, the GM has set up a pirate barbarian and a pirate warlock. The first thing the warlock does is he is going to cast a spell on Keith. He is going to cast darkness on Keith. Poor Keith is now wandering around in darkness, cannot move, cannot see, uh, and the warlock, however, is going to, oops, get back onto the token layer. Uh, the warlock is going to leave the darkness, or leave the cove, going to climb that little cliff face. He walks into the darkness, and there follows a horrific battle in which Keith cannot see the uh, his opponent, the GM can tell where they are by nameplates that the uh, player can't see and can also click on any token he needs to click on. Uh, there follows a horrific battle in which Keith is victorious because he's super cool and awesome. Uh, the darkness spell is immediately dispelled uh, upon the warlock being rendered unconscious. Unconscious, Keith doesn't kill him because he's not heartless and cruel. Uh, so Keith goes back to the edge of the cove there calls down to the barbarian and says hey barbarian i uh, kind of defeated that warlock you were with do you still want to fight or do you want to be friends 
And the barbarian says, hey, that warlock had me under a spell. Uh, I'm super cool with you now. Hey, do you want to lift off the island? And says Keith, Keith says, that's, uh, that's my neighborly of you. So tell you what, there's a treasure chest on the other side of this island. We can take it with us. We'll split it when we get back to civilization. They shake hands on it. Keith clambers down the, uh, the edge of the cove once they've retrieved the chest, gets into the boat, and the two of them sail away back to civilization where they become deservedly rich and happy till the end of their days.